Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now we often hear about projection mapping effects being used in themed entertainment and the occasional Halloween or Christmas display, but those often contain challenging animations and video segments and it's a skill that exceeds that of your average home haunter. But what if I told you that with a single projector like this one and a photo editing software, you could add some projection mapping effects to your haunt? Let me show you what I mean. To get started, we'll need to find some images to use for our projection. I'll link to some of my favorite royalty-free stock photo sources in the video description, and of course Google Image Search is a great resource. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to grab photos of a door, a window, some shutters, a few transparent grunge textures, and some ivy to help me transform the backside of my shop into a creepy old house. I'll leave a link to all of my files in the video description as well. You may find some of the images are already isolated or have a transparent background, in which case you can ignore this next part. But if not, you'll need to do a bit of cropping to get the pieces you need for your projection. I'm most comfortable using Photoshop, so that's what I'll be working in, although there are similar free programs available to accomplish the same task. Their tools may be slightly different, but the general approach will be the same. Starting with the window shutters, since I only need one and will mirror it for the final image, I'm going to grab my pen tool and create an outline in the shape of the shutter. I like using the pen tool because it's an editable way to trace an object, so if my outline isn't quite perfect, I can always go back and adjust. I'll set handles around the major parts of the shutter, and once I'm happy with how my outline looks, I'll command click on a Mac or control click on a PC to select the outline I just created, and then we'll click on my shutter photo layer and apply a mask to remove the background and isolate the shutter. Within the Mask Options panel are a few sliders that will help to make the harsh edges look a bit more natural. So I'll make a few adjustments until I'm happy with how my mask looks, and then we'll apply my selections to the layer. Once my mask is finalized, I can delete the outline layer and can scale up my shutter image using the Transform function before exporting it as a transparent ping file. I'll repeat this step for any of the images I found that need to be cropped. With all of our images taken care of, Let's talk projectors for a second. I reached out to my friends over at AXA and they sent me their M7 Pico projector to use for this video. It's a great little projector with native 1080p resolution that's plenty bright at 1200 LED lumens, has all of the connections you'd expect and can mirror from most handheld devices and some laptops. Plus it's battery powered with a three hour battery life in eco mode. I'll have the M7 set up on a table for this video, but because of its small size, you can hide it nearly anywhere. It's also got mounting holes in the bottom if you want to build a stand for it. Just keep in mind that you'll need to return the projector to this position every time you use this projection map, so make sure it's not blocked by any other objects or props. Now that the projector's powered on, set as my secondary monitor and focused, I'll open up a Photoshop document at the M7's native resolution, 1920 by 1080 and we'll get started building our projection effect. I've already placed my wood slat image into a smart object and added it to my document. Then I'll select the transform function, command T on a Mac or control T on a PC, and I'll start grabbing the corners and dragging them into alignment with my wall. Press and hold the command key on a Mac or control on a PC to select the individual corners and drag them into position. Once I have everything aligned the way I want, I'll hit enter to finalize the transformation. Because the wood slats were a bit too new looking, I've gone ahead and added a grunge layer using a transparent ping image that I found in a Google image search. A quick opacity adjustment to something a bit more subtle, and then we can move on to adding the door. This process is the same as the wood slat layer. I placed the door image into a smart object and will drag the corners to align it with the real door to make the blank surface a bit more interesting. I'll give the door a bit more character by applying some shadow effects. This will help to balance out the image as well as help to blend the edges into the scene. To do this, I'll go to the Layers menu and choose Inner Shadow from the Layer Styles option. These types of effects are subjective and will change as you add more elements to your scene, so be prepared to do a bit of trial and error to get everything looking just the way you want. This process will continue as I add more elements, like a window and shutters as well as a gradient layer to create shadows, a tree silhouette, ivy, and a bit more weathering. All of these elements are unique to your own display, 
but it's a great way to test different looks before settling in on a final design. Once you're happy with how everything looks, mark the location and height of your projector, save the image, and you can load it into the projector via USB or an SD card to be displayed without the need for your computer. And that's it. You've projection mapped your surface. Now before you say it, I know. Using Photoshop seems like you're diving into the medium deep part of the swimming pool. But even the most novice Photoshop user and these commands can produce some pretty impressive results. So give it a shot. Thanks to our sponsor, AXA Technologies, for sending me the M7 Pico projector. It's a great little unit, and if you're in the market for a projector, I highly recommend checking it out. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. <laughs>